Greetings from the mountain kingdom of Lesotho. Lesotho experiences very erratic weather where we can have periods of good rainfall and then we get periods of extreme flash droughts. So it's very important for us to be able to have a good source of water that we can use for irrigation. And today I'm gonna show you a very cool method that my dad engineered that we have been using for harvesting water for irrigation over many, many years. So please stick around in the video until the end. And if you are new, kindly subscribe to the channel, like, comment, share, and don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you'll be notified every time I upload. So those of you that have been following me for a while know that I love to garden and farm and plant stuff. But the question is, where do I get the water to irrigate? Because it's becoming increasingly impossible for local farmers to farm sustainably without water for irrigation due to the increasing challenges that we are experiencing due to climate change. This is a stream that flows right by my home and farm and here we harvest only about 3% or less of the water that flows past and the rest goes into the Orange River further downstream. It's in this stream where my dad has built three sand groundwater dams over the past 30 years. This is Pamong in Lesotho in Africa and this is where I live and our winters are quite dry with little to no rainfall in recent years especially and even in the summer rainfall is quite unpredictable. Therefore sand dams are a reliable solution capturing rainwater when it does rain and storing it in sand layers in the stream. The concept of sand dams has been around for a while but my dad was the first to introduce it to Lesotho. When constructing these dams he starts first by building retaining dam walls across the stream and they are about a meter in height. The height can be more depending on the design and the height of the oldest dam was actually increased a few years ago so that more water can be harvested. The significance of these walls is to trap and silt more sand like this instance where the bed of this stream was increased significantly all the way around this curve since we built the dam. Water is then stored in all that sand and it does not evaporate even when there is no top flow of water in the stream. This means that we have a reliable water supply for extended periods, even through a drought, enabling agriculture to thrive through this sustainable solution to water scarcity. In addition to the walls, gabions are filled with rocks and placed at both ends of the stream and this is to stabilize the stream walls so that water won't go around the dam and create new channels. So how do we collect the water? These pictures are actually from when my dam was being built and at the bottom there, there's a pipe poking through. After the wall was built, we added this catchment it has a storage capacity of about four to five thousand liters and through that pipe at the bottom is where clean water that has gone through natural sand filtration comes in. I took this footage during some routine maintenance of the catchment sometime last year and as you can see 
the water coming in is very very clean this port is always opened so that the tank can remain full and we have an additional inlet coming in from the top and when it's opened top flow water can also come into the tank from there we are completely off grid here and we use a solar pump to pump the water my dad built a lovely rendezvous with a rotating roof so that we can follow the sun the whole day this enables me to run the pump for lengthy hours from sunrise up to sunset we installed a power line going to the stream and from it we just use an extension cord to run the pump. We have also buried a pipeline to our home and from these outlets we can run some sprinklers to water the garden and the trees. Or we can even use a garden hose to irrigate manually. We also have a pipeline buried to and around the perimeters of the farm with 21 outlets and from there I can connect some sprinklers or drip line. It really just depends on the crop. I mostly use drip line for crops that don't like getting the foliage wet like tomatoes. And right now I'm mostly using sprinklers as, as you can see on these potatoes here. I also fill this tank so that I can use gravity flow to use the water when the pump is not running. Thanks to my dad's innovative mind, our family is able to achieve self-reliance by growing our own food and we continuously strive towards a more sustainable future. It's also worth mentioning that the forest next to the dams is thriving and expanding very rapidly due to the abundance of water that is available since the dams were built. And the difference is significant when comparing to further downstream where there are no dams. This is the oldest dam and just look at the size of that willow tree trunk. These trees are home to various species of birds, so we aren't the only ones benefiting from these dams, but so is nature. This is how we are solving water scarcity here. Do let me know how you are meeting your water needs in your country. Do you pump straight from the river or stream? Or are you using a borehole or perhaps some other method and what is your source of energy? I would also love to know how climate change has affected the rain patterns where you live and whether you would consider building these sand groundwater dams if water scarcity is an existing problem in your area thank you so much for watching the video up until this far if you enjoyed it kindly give it a thumbs up comment down below also and let me know what you think also share it with your family and friends and if you aren't already subscribed and you'd like to follow what me and my family are doing right here in the mountain kingdom of Lesotho in Africa, don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to smash the notification bell so that you'll be notified every time I upload. And from the mountain kingdom of Lesotho to you guys, it's goodbye for now. I'll see you in the next one.